On December 3rd, 2020, music critic Anthony Fantana released a review of the album Pink, Black, and Orange in the Corners, an August 2020 release by the band Lobster Fight. While I primarily listen to hip-hop and R&B, most of the acts that Fantano covers are recognizable to me when their reviews appear in my YouTube subscription box, but I had never heard of such a thing as a lobster fight, so I was instantly interested. In the video, Fantano described them as Colorado music duo that's creating some band camp buzz based on the unique cross-section of genres popping up on this project, which intrigued me because it was clear that Fantano did not need to review this album, as the group is not mainstream in the slightest. Instead, it was clear that Fantano wanted to share this music with his audience. After listening to the album, I can say the review was deserved. It is definitely not an easy listen, due to its chaotic nature, but its combination of quote, punk rock, indie rock, indie tronica, jazz rock, lo-fi, and synth pop, unquote, make it worthwhile. Before too much praise, I want to give background to who Lobster Fight is. Lobster Fight is made up of members in Hell Sanchez, who contributes to the piano, guitar, synths, bass, and vocals, and is also the band's graphic designer, and James Gov, who is the band's drummer. For Sanchez, I would like to note that he goes by two other screen names, This Duck Is Going To Kill Me, and Yeah Good Luck, with the latter being the name of his personal Bandcamp account, which is quote, an archive for lots of things, unquote. To preface, I was not able to find any recordings released by Gov before Lobster Fight's formation in August 2020, but Sanchez has been releasing music in the form of demos for years, and under Yeah Good Luck since June 2020. Sanchez's first release under the name was his Random Songs EP, which runs at tracks in length. He describes the project as quote, a collection of songs I wrote while teaching myself how to record slash mix slash master, unquote. Seeing as this project was not meant to be a cohesive unit, I'm going to omit the tracks 2 and short song for my discussion as they would later land on pink, black, and orange in the corner. The second track on the tape, Settlements, is half song, half screamed, and is backed by a distorted electric guitar and 8-bit instrumental. This is the perfect track to start with because it is so foundational and revealing for the sound of Lobster Fight. Its vocals being half song, half screamed, reveal the ever apparent combination of folk influences and emo and punk influences on Sanchez's vocal performances. The instrumental's nature is also foundational in the same way, because nearly all of Lobster Fight's songs utilize electronic distortion. For the rest of the track listing, it simply continues these styles, but I would like to note one more influence apparent in Sanchez's sound, with that being that his vocals sound heavily reminiscent of folk era Bob Dylan in a good way. The day after this release, Anne Hellwood releases Applying for Jobs EP, a two-track pairing of Applying for Jobs, and anyone know where I can purchase a comedically large spoon? When describing the tape, Anhel labeled it as quote, influenced by lo-fi hip-hop, and it is exactly that, because the tape instrumentally is piano-based, but distorted to be representative of lo-fi hip-hop. Two months later on August 31st, Lobster Fight would officially form through the release of their debut album, Pink, Black, and Orange in the Corners. I believe a perfect description of this album would be that it is a beautiful juxtaposition of eclectic and chaotic emo and nostalgic and ideal folk music that is backed by distorted instrumentals. This description comes to life within the first 10 seconds of the album's opener, Equal Zero, by Lobster by interrupting the idealistic sense that opened the album by having Sanchez deliver brass screaming over said instrumental. The following track, too, seems to possibly use the same instrumental as equals zero, and for that, it is more of the same, which is not even that bad in my book. Instrumentally, the album's third track, three, is my favorite due to the distortion that was applied to the track's guitar, which makes it incredibly unique. The next track, Moon Pie Bigger Staff, is probably the most difficult listen on the album, but the energy that Sanchez and Guff put forth make it the album's hardest track. Instrumentally, the fifth track, five, is more of the same, but it's opener of this Ren and Stimpy show sample. Hey, you don't suppose <gasps> he's unhappy? Is reflected in the lyrical content that deals with a heartbreak. At the back end of five, I would like to note the inclusion of a repeated looping of a cat meow followed by a man, possibly a sleep paralysis demon, screaming, because this directly reflects the album art where this is occurring. For both the sixth track, which is untitled, and the eighth track, short song, they are instrumental only. For the untitled 6 track, it gives me a feeling of progression or travel, which while it is probably not inspired by, reminds me of Pink Floyd's On The Run, which is meant to sonically represent travel. Short Song, the album's closer, is simply a beautiful and uplifting instrumental folk piece. Nestled between these though is Frog, which is a 12 minute in length masterpiece. Only its first half contains lyrics, with Hernandez discussing here how he metaphorically welcomes the fact that he cannot just jump as high as a frog. For its back half, a looped instrumental of a guitar and a drum break are played, but accompanied by synths and other instrumentation that progresses the track to its close. To be completely honest, although I cannot say I listen to much folk, emo, or lo-fi music outside of the classics, I can say without a doubt this album is incredible. My only outstanding critique of the album would be its vocal mixing, in that Sanchez's vocals usually sit at the back of the mix, but I assume that just comes with its lo-fi nature. After the release of Pink, Black, and Orange in the Corners, Lobster Fight was signed to the independent and Atlanta-based label, Flea Collar Tapes, which was founded in 2020 and seems to be signing other Bandcamp artists on October 5th. Since their signing, they have released one song, The Restaurant, 
as part of a split alongside Art is Finally Happy. The restaurant is not alike to any of their previous work, in that it is heavily synth based rather than the hard guitar and drums of the album. It is a really enjoyable listen though, and a good standalone single. As mentioned at the top of the video, Anthony Fantano reviewed Pink, Black, and Orange in the Corners in early December 2020, which has created an explosion in popularity for Lobster Fight relative to the size of their fan base prior to the review. Fantano rated the album a 7 out of 10, with praise for nearly every track except for two, which he did not enjoy the execution of. Since the review, there has been an outpour of support for Lobster Fight, with many in their YouTube comment sections already labeling the album as a masterpiece and classic. With his outpour of support, I feel like Lobster Fight's popularity and sonic quality will improve exponentially. I wish all the best to Sanchez and Gov.